Hello, and welcome to episode 24 of Ken Plays Crash Landing. Uh, what I've been doing since uh, last time is I've been over here, and I've got the four kinetic compressors that we had in the last episode, and I've got the advanced pressure tube on top. The uh, hardened energy conduit is below to power them, and then there in the wall are the four redstone emitters. So that's set up and here's a receiver, so the receiver receives the pressure and then turns the emitters on and off and the way I've got it set right now is it goes to 18 bar and then it shuts off so this is at 18 bar and it comes along and it goes under and it shoots over to the other side and then right here we've got the pressure regulator tube this is set up back here, there's an emitter of 12 that's just a continuous 12 all the time and given this thing 12 makes it come down to about 4.5 bar which is where this is because this thing explodes if it gets to 5 so it'll always be right here the advantage to this is there's this uh, tube is so big and there's so much higher pressure in here that it's able to um, keep this fed at 4.5 uh, just real easy and because it goes all the way in it's able to go in real fast so I can get a large volume in there um, over here, this thing doesn't really use that much, so I s use the same thing, the regulator tube and power of 12 to step it down, and then I just use the small uh, tube to connect it. I could have used the big, I could have used the small, it doesn't really matter over there. This one matters more. What I've been doing is I've been trying to cook up seeds and put in here, and the problem is trying to use the chest and the hopper over here, it's just way too slow. So what I've been doing is I jump up on top and I break the center block, and then I'll just grab a whole stack of seeds and, you know, just throw them out and drop them down, and then I'll put that block back in, and I can get a whole stack of 64 in there in just a couple seconds. And then what's interesting is this thing will kick out a like 20 30 at a time so it's much 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 faster now you can do speed upgrades on these to try to get these to open and close faster but it's actually just faster to break the thing and throw this stuff in the problem is for the several seconds you've got it open you're losing air so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Steve's factory manager here to do something I I'm going to say in a way that it was not intended to be done. So what we're going to do is we're going to need an advanced cable cluster. And everything we've done so far has been very simple. We've used inventory cable and then whatever kind of device we've made, we've connected it to the inventory cable. So here's a cable cluster. We're going to make one of those and then we're going to make an advanced cable cluster which is one of those. I already had one, but then I decided, oh, I better film this. So what do we do with an advanced cable cluster? Well, by itself, it does nothing. It's useless. Here's an item valve and a block gate. We already know about both of these. The item valve can spit items out or suck items in, and the block gate does the same thing for uh, blocks. I can then take these two, and now I've got a cable cluster with a block gate, and I can add the item valve, and now I've got both. So this block now is an item valve and it's a block gate. It's both of those. Why do we need that? Well, because I need a way to break the block up here, which would be a block gate. Why am I not able to break that? Okay, something weird's going on. Let me pause. Okay, it, it did break, it just, I don't remember it taking so long. So I'm going to stick that, not there. See, that's not what I wanted. Let's just put that there for the moment. We're going to put it there. you got to put it in just right, because I want the thing to face down. So that's why, I don't remember this taking so long to break those, but okay, whatever. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so that'll build back pressure. And you can see these are on. Uh, these did explode one time on me. Uh, during testing and it's because I had the thing set to 19 and a half bar and so I think it got a little too close to 20 so now I uh, brought it down to 18. So we've got the cable cluster up there with both of those items so that means this block can use the gate to break the chamber wall below it and it can use the item valve to spit items in. And what we've got right here is we've got a chest and it's sitting on some inventory cable that was just our input chest. I moved it here here I've got a redstone receiver and I've got a button. None of this does anything yet because I haven't done the Steve's programming. So I'm going to do that and get some water and then show you hopefully how this works. 
So what we've got here is we've got two different things going on. I've got a trigger. This time I've made it a redstone. So when you go to interval, normally you just have one second. Well, you can actually go down to connections, and instead of interval, you do redstone controlled. It gives you all these other options. So what I did was I picked the receiver, and that's the one that the button's right underneath. So this redstone receiver, up, because the button's above it, 15 through 15 which means that you've pressed the button, right? Because the button's either zero or it's 15. And then, like I said, so that's the trigger is, and then you've got these different options, low pulse, low signal, high signal, high pulse. So when you press the redstone, uh, when you press the button, it's gonna be this one. So that's gonna come down, so you've got your input. So your input is the gate, and that is the, it's technically the advanced cable cluster, but that doesn't show up. What shows up is this gate, and then there's also the item valve, and they both have the exact same XYZ uh, coordinate. So that block gate that's on top, down, and then item, and I say pressure chamber wall. So you're going to grab the pressure chamber wall beneath you. You're going to output it to a chest, and it's just a wood chest that I built down here, uh, just an intermediate chest. And then your input is going to be the other chest, assuming I did this correctly. And if it doesn't work, it's because I picked the wrong chest somewhere. Uh, it's going to grab that chest upstairs, which will be our input chest. And then the output is going to be to the item valve. Okay, so there's your item valve. So let me run through that again real quick upstairs, because it's a little bit confusing. Oh, and I've got a zombie outside. That's a whole other thing I haven't told you about. Uh, so we're going to put stuff in this chest. So I, you know, I go over here and I grab some seeds and I say, oh, I want to cook up 15 lightning seeds. So I throw them in here and then I'll press the button. And what it does is this thing is waiting for that button to be pressed. When the button's pressed, it comes up here. It takes that because uh, that's a gate and a valve. The gate grabs the uh, piece of the pressure chamber wall right beneath it, pulls it out, sends it down here to this chest that I stuck up on the ceiling. Then it grabs everything out of this chest and sends it up to the item valve and it just pours down into the hole. And then that's all that happens. The other part, oh, and I added some more of this too here. I probably should have mentioned that before. Uh, exact same thing, just made more of it. The other thing we've got here is we've got another trigger. This is a normal trigger every second and it's a condition and what you're going to check every second is it's going to check the gate and that's that gate on top. So there it was. It's going to check that gate. It's going to check down and it's going to see if there's a pressure chamber wall beneath it. If there is, it does nothing because most of the time there is, so it stops there. When that pressure chamber wall's not beneath it, then it goes to a redstone condition. It checks that receiver, that's the same one with the button. It checks up, and it checks for a strength of zero or one. So basically it says, is there a pressure chamber wall beneath me? No. Okay, check the button. Is the button off? Yes. And then it goes to input, and it's that wood chest, and it outputs it to the gate. So why is that? Well, the problem is if I made that as one statement, it pulls the pressure chamber wall, tries to throw the stuff in and puts the wall back and it all happens at once and it ends up spitting the seeds out because I tested this in a single player world. So this is just my bit of a delay because when you press a button, it turns on and then it turns off. It's not instantaneous. So as long as that button's on, it's got time to throw seeds in and then the button turns off and then it puts the thing back. It's still ridiculously faster than I could ever do it. So if this works properly, and there's a good chance it won't because I picked the wrong chest because there's so much, that should, and you can see, God only knows what happened there. Okay, so I did, I picked the wrong chest. There was a uh, good chance that was gonna happen. Let me fix my mistake. Oh, put leaves in there, yeah, so. Oh, uh, yeah, we grabbed the wrong chest there. Okay, so I'll fix that in a second off camera. Um, so I think there might be a bad guy outside somewhere. What happened was, when an, I was in the process of doing this, I broke this tube. This thing was making something for me, and it, this uh, I.O. unit was turning, and I broke this tube and put it back, and my game immediately crashed. I couldn't get back in the game, so I had to MC edit the level and come in and delete this uh, assembly unit and then I was able to get back in. I went into creative mode and I gave myself this thing back, except I noticed there were mobs spawning outside everywhere. 
Well, MC Edit does not recognize glowstone nooks as lights. So it rebuilt the like the light map or whatever and it said, "Oh, there's no lights anywhere." And it made it dark. Now what was weird was when you came in the game, and I'm going to go into creative mode to go out here because I know what's going to happen. Um, when you came in the game, everything was lit up because it's like the it's like the engine recognized, hey, okay, this is light, so there's light, and when I pressed F7, nothing came up except the mobs were spawning, and they kept doing it in broad daylight, the mobs were spawning. So what I've been doing, now this might actually be legitimate if there's mobs in there, because it might actually be dark, uh, but what's been happening is I'll get mobs to spawn in some weird little spot, and I'll go over and I'll put a torch down and break it, and then it fixes that area, so... I'm guessing the problem is the leaf barrel filled up. Yeah, I forgot I was making leaves, so that was actually a legitimate reason for the mobs to spawn out there. So occasionally I might have to jump into creative and go put torches down and break them and try to get that to fix. Um, so let me clean up my mess outside and let me figure out which chest is the correct one and not the leaf chest. All right, I found my uh, little mistake down here. That is the inventory cable that has that wood chest on top of it. So I just never connected it, and then when I was in here, I knew approximately what the coordinates were, and I picked one that was close. So... 237... should be 235. 235? Wood chest at 235? No. Okay, let me check again. What I meant to say was 236. That was the one I was looking for. Okay, so... That is that chest. So we've got the correct input chest now. You can still, we've, we've still got our 15 seeds. So if I press the button, and you heard the air stop, so this is gone. And I don't know, no, I never set this to plastic, so I'm gonna, there you go, 15. So you can see how much just ridiculously faster that is to grab, let me see, I don't know how many stacks it can go through. You just hear the air for a second there. I'll say it didn't quite make through all of them. And it stopped again. There you go. And, yep. So that is a success, mostly. Uh, this should be cleaned up out here by now. Yes, it is. Um, that was just my mistake for leaving that running. Oops, forgot. I was getting a little low on water, so I wanted to turn it on and get some leaves, and just got too many leaves. Maybe we should make that barrel bigger. Okay, so what we're doing now, we've got this thing set up. Um, I'm still kind of waiting on more seeds, and even with that, all that extra production down there, it's still, I'm just kind of waiting, and sometimes I stand down here and bone meal if I need a specific thing, but still kind of waiting on that. Um, so I'm going to wait a bit longer. These aren't the good seeds, so those have been the good seeds I've been doing. Um, and the lightning plant I need, and then the squid plant I need, because that's your transistors and that's your capacitors. And I need a bunch more of those, and then we'll be able to continue. So I'm just going to hang out here and wait for some more seeds to grow, and maybe bone meal some, and then we'll continue. Okay, I just wanted to show how quick this is. So I've got this set for transistor. There's nothing inside the pressure chamber. I'm going to do, so here's the transistor. We're gonna hit this once. It should take two stacks. Wait for the air to shut off. Hit it again. Should get the rest of them in. And they'll all be in there. So there's your first transistor. So that's not too fast. What's usually the second time is where it really there you go, 27, and there was nothing in here. There were no transistors, so, that, I mean, that's just, it's ridiculously fast. You can make speed upgrades, and you can put the speed upgrades in here. It's just, I, I don't see how you could ever make enough speed upgrades that it would go as fast as what I just did. Look at that, that's already a whole stack. So we'll do the same thing again. We've got to change this to the capacitor. And press the button, send in two, wait for the air to stop, press the button again. I don't know what happened if you press the button twice, it 
definitely does not have logic to handle that so I would not recommend it so there's your first one and then so the next time we'll get 20 something there you go again and I didn't make those just trying to make it about the same number of each um, so this is gonna get us going here once this next little batch comes through and there you go for that looks like it's got one more stack um, to get so that will get us enough and I've already got a bunch of PCBs that I ran through there and and the other thing let me say real quick is this thing takes a lot of air to go that fast so having the big tube having this at 4.5 and having so much volume here that it can just keep that at 4.5 that's why it goes so fast you got to have all of that stuff uh, but so we've already got PCBs so I got 42 in there that's not enough to uh not enough capacitors and transistors so how many do I get 21 okay so I got 24 of them so that's pretty good uh, so what we're working on next get my quest book out here we need to make quite a few different machines uh, so salvage operation I did do some flying around between episodes and I found another city and this one actually has two reactors. I didn't do anything, I didn't land, I didn't try to do anything. I just wanted to find it, so I found it. So when we're ready to try and get that turbine controller, I've got two shots to get a turbine. Um, so that's that, we're not gonna deal with that yet. So on this quest here, I need to make an auto spawner, auto enchanter, the rancher, the chronotyper, the breeder. Probably there's some stuff under there I need to make. Um, I think I probably have everything to do this quest. It's just a matter of making all of the powders and doing them into the fluids because how much do you need? A thousand of each, so that's not too big of a deal. I'm guessing this is going to be probably a decent amount if that's the bottom thing. And this also, these are for the animals outside and besides just making them for the quest, I'm also going to want them uh, just to make uh, some of the animals because I'd like to get some pigs going so I can make the big breakfast uh, just because I, d I don't really need it I just want to and then we've got the auto spawner so we'll have to get a mob spawning room so I'm gonna have to get quite a few things together and then we'll try to craft a whole bunch of machines at once I think I've got enough stuff cooked up here that we can make all of those machines and the ones that are kinda down and they were locked still so let's see the first thing we're gonna make auto we got to make a enchanter yes uh, should have everything I made a bunch of machine frames which as you remember is just the 100 and bar and electrum I didn't check if I have enough electrum that might be a stumbling block let's find out so there's our enchanter and then we also need an auto spawner I did not make magma creams And auto spawner and we need uh, the rancher should have all of that and the chronotyper and there's that and the breeder oops and I already made these, the golden carrots and golden apples. Okay. So, let's find out if there's, looks like there's not second parts. Uh, claim reward, so I don't pick. And this one I don't pick. We can see what this is. Sewer, sludge boiler, biofuel, slaughterhouse. Okay. Um, probably can make all those sewer sludge boiler biofuel sludge boiler okay make a couple furnaces make a bucket make a couple buckets there's that and we need a uh, sewer bricks I might have bricks in there oh I do look at that nice when I've got stuff that I don't even know I have although I kinda thought I had it uh, what was the other one biofuel generator oh blaze rod so we're stopped again 
Okay, that's okay. Yeah, from the slaughterhouse. Let's see if we can make that one before we continue. Invar sword, two of those, and two axes. You can see this is why the Emmy is so nice to craft with. I don't know if I have another one of those. Let's make one. Probably don't have another Invar gear. And there you go, slaughterhouse. So I don't need those. Let's see, I don't need the drum or this. Don't need any of those at the moment. Definitely don't need those. Don't need that. There's something in there. We'll find that out later. Uh, spawner. Let's see. Get rid of the enchanter. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to make some grinders here too. Oh, I might have already made. Let's see if I get. F uh, no. What do I need? I need books. <laughs> I need books. Four. One more. Should have five. Okay. Get rid of that one. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to be able to spawn the blazes, because I captured a blaze in a safari net right there. So we need blaze rods. So we're going to use the auto spawner to spawn him, and then we're going to use four grinders. Uh, just because of the size of the room. Uh, if you make the room too small, the blaze can spawn outside the room, and that's kind of a problem. Uh, what we we want to do, we want to be nearby our source of mob essence, or we could use Steve's Factory Manager to move the mob essence. Um, I don't really want to put stuff down here. It takes a long time to dig out. Let me, uh, let me think about where I want to put this and start working on the room, and then we'll be back. So what I did over here, um, over by my animals on this side of the house, I just excavated a giant pit, and I'm in the process of filling it in on top, and then I'm going to put all of the dust back up here. And so you won't know it's here, it's just kind of a little hidden thing. And to get it, there's a, or get to it, there is a tunnel that I built under here. So I can connect to it from the basement. I wasn't really sure where to put the thing. It, it could go anywhere. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, so we've got a little tunnel here. And I kind of stopped trying to make the walls look nice because this was difficult. That uh, liquid pyrothium or blazing pyrothium is up there. So this was a little bit of a challenge to get under it. Uh, so here's our room. And I left room so I can get to the backs of the grinders. And, and I guess I should try to make this look nicer but uh, we're kind of getting close to the end of this so it's like eh, I don't know if I want to spend that much time so what we've got here we've got this block here and I think I still have the thing right yes here it is auto spawner there and I'm gonna have to cut a little tunnel underneath to be able to access it so I still got to do that and then I've got the four grinders on the sides, and these grinders do a five by five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the other one will come and do one, two, three, four, five. So they overlap. They also do the five by five this way, which is two to the side, and then two to the side. And then when this one does two to the side, so they overlap. So the entire room is covered. And the reason that's big is because when it goes to spawn something, it checks a certain area. And if you make your room a five by five and then had a grinder well it could spawn outside the wall if, you know if the wall was a five by five your wall would be here it could spawn outside so I made this a nine by nine and normally I would make it a little taller but that's as tall as I could make it and I even dug the floor down one so it'll be able to spawn um, a nice wide range and the grinders will get them immediately no matter where it is so I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the dust up there and um, I don't know maybe do this stone but I'm not really feeling it and then we'll be back to uh, hook all this up I just made a bunch more hardened energy conduit and uh, inventory cable and I'm gonna try to get this connected I went ahead and I added some more but then I start digging and yeah, there's gonna end up being some dust in here so what I'm gonna try to do is connect the power underneath and then have inventory cable come up and I'm trying to tunnel down there it'll make a little more sense once we're down there so I'm going to do that to the two sides and that's the finished product and I'll do the same thing over there this is my way down right now once this is done you won't be able to come down here 
uh, to go off to the sides. You'll just have this. So the power for the other one should be there, it looks like. Yep, it is. And there's your inventory cable. So I'm going to run this inventory cable and then the power through here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to try to get back over that way and do the other side. And we'll come back once this is uh, done because it's going to take me a bit to try to get this all hooked up. So I've just got some real basic programming here. The grinders make mob essence. So I'm telling it to pull the mob essence and send it to the drums. Here I'm telling it to pull mob essence from the drum and send it to the auto spawner because the auto spawner runs off of mob essence and power and I hid my inventory cable and my energy conduit down and I buried it all so there's there's nothing down there to get to it's all buried everything's only accessible up here um, so here's this you can tell that it's got power and it's got mob essence and uh, all of these have energy and so the only thing we have to do is throw this in here. Now when I throw that in there, it's going to start spawning blazes. I can run out and uh, wall this up, but then in order to shut it off, I'm going to have to go back in. So what I think I'm going to do is put like a chest and maybe put a uh, couple buttons. And you'll press a button and it'll throw the safari net in or pull it out. And uh, that's how we'll do it. We won't really shut it off. We'll just pull the safari net out so it won't have anything to spawn. So. Um, think that covers everything in here. There's really nothing else I did that's special. I just did a whole lot of digging off of ca off camera. That's the wrong stone, but who cares. So let me finish that and then we'll see how this thing works. So I've got a fairly basic program here. I did a redstone trigger and I set it for 15 and high pulse. So it's the same as what we did in the uh, last episode with the button. I've got a condition. It's set to the spawner and it's set for Safari Net and I set it to fuzzy detection. I don't know if that's going to be what we need or if we'll have to pick uh, match all. And so is there a Safari Net in the spawner? Yes. Then the input is the spawner and the output is a wood chest I put over here. If there's no Safari Net, the input is that same wood chest and the output is the spawner. So basically when I press this button, it's checking to see if there's a safari net, which right now there's not, otherwise stuff would be spawning. If there's not, it's going to grab a safari net from here and throw it in there. If there is something there, it's going to grab the safari net from there and put it here. So we can only have one safari net in the chest. You know, this is fairly basic. You could set it up to uh, do much more complicated things. So here's uh, this. So let's see what happens here. And it's gone, so that's a good sign. So we should have some blaze spawning here shortly. It usually seems to take several seconds. All right, so there's some blaze. Quite a few blaze. Oh, you know what? Let's try to pull that thing back, and that worked. Okay. Um, I just realized I never set the grinders up for items. So the grinders are probably pulling those in, and who knows where they're going. Um, so let me add just a little more logic to tell the grinders to send their items upstairs. This uh, zombie just spawned right here. So that was an example of how sometimes the lighting doesn't seem to work and they can spawn where they shouldn't. So I think he spawned somewhere around here. So I'm just going to add some more lights in this area and hopefully it'll update the lighting. See like you see over there by the wall, there's a zombie who's in the light. He shouldn't have spawned that close unless he actually walked that far, but it didn't look like it. Um, I'm not really that worried about that. All right, back to what I was doing. All right, there was one other problem. I brought that inventory cable up. I forgot we discovered upstairs with the mob grinder because that was like 20 episodes ago or something. you got to have a chest for it to kick the items into. So what I did on all of them was I brought the inventory cable next to it so that that could supply it uh, or pull the mob essence out, and then there's a chest behind it. And so I've got those four chests uh, set to send items upstairs to the gold chest at the end of the sieve. So if I start this back up, we should start getting some uh, blazes, and they should die. And we shouldn't have anything in there. It should start sending the blaze rods upstairs to that chest. And I already know that I, when I broke um, the inventory cables behind those, three blaze rods popped out. So I know there's going to be three in here, and so there's more than that. So it's definitely working. So we'll just wait. Yep, there you go. 10, 11. So 
the only problem with our system is if you put too many things in here in the chest and press the button, who knows what's going to happen. So you got to just remember that. But otherwise, all I have to do is press the button to pull the safari net back out, and the thing will shut off. And what's nice is the power keeps going, so the grinders are going to kill anything. And there you go. So, now we got some blaze rods. Let's continue where we were and try to get this wrapped up. And now we have the biofuel generator, which should complete the quest. Uh, soul sand, safari net, essence berry. I'm going to go with that. And what do we got here? Meat, pink slime, sludge, sewage. So that's not too bad. Um, that's what we'll work on next episode, I think, is... We're going to use some of those machines we made for the animals outside, and we're going to change this around and set it up and get that going. And I keep having problems with the chickens. They keep disappearing outside or, like, through the fence, or I, I don't know how it happens. So I've had to keep an empty safari net on me, come over and grab them and put them back. <clears throat> I don't know why he keeps doing that. Uh, so that's what we're going to work on next time. We'll be out here, and we're going to work on uh, this quest, and probably maybe we'll try to throw this one in too and get this wrapped up. And then after that, we'll have to uh, go back to the city for the turban, and maybe, I don't know, we'll fit this in. Um, and is that it, or is there another one? I'm not sure. I don't remember. Uh, so I think that's uh, about it. So I will see you next time.